Well, good morning. What's going on? This is Pastor Jay here for your shelter devotional for the day. I'm here from Jefferson, Ohio. Look at this beautiful landscape I got in the back. It's raining a bit. Um, things are different here, but the word stays the same. Let's get into it today. Episode five of our freedom series talking about the power of our consideration when it comes to freedom. Let's go. Well, welcome this morning, guys. I hope you guys are doing well. I'll tell you what, um, this series on freedom has been so cool. Um, everything except the part where Chris started to sing from the Prince of Egypt. But I thought what he talked about in that was super valuable to us. That freedom sometimes looks different than what we think it is. And as you know, yesterday we talked about the idea of freedom requiring us and action on our part. And so what I thought I'd do today is just give you a little bit of a, of a tidbit um, out of Romans chapter 6 that's super valuable. You know, a lot of times people will come up to me and in our conversation they'll ask a question that is like this. Why do I keep doing what I do um, if I'm set free? Meaning this like, hey Pastor Jay, I know that Christ's death set me free from sin. But why do I keep wanting to sin? Why do I keep making mistakes like that? I think it's a valid question. So here's the deal. The truth of the matter is that we have two enemies when it comes to our spiritual walk, our freedom, right? The first is our flesh, right? It's the old part of us that actually has died and gone away, but still yet lives with inside of us is what Paul talks about. And we know that the second enemy to our freedom, of course, is Satan, the constant accuser, the one that's like an old movie, an old song, an old place that reminds us of what we were, that reminds us of a season of life where we were bound to our old man. But that's the coolest thing about the unification that happens when you and me are in Christ. And that's the point of this whole thing. Because we're in Christ, this whole series is about our freedom, being set free from what we were. Let's read this in Romans chapter five. It says, since we've been united with him in his death, we'll also be raised to life as he was. See that connection point there? We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that our that sin might lose its power in our life. We're no longer slaves to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we also live with him. We're sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he'll never die again. Death has no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Now this is so important. It's not some sort of mind trick that Paul's talking about here, but he uses a word that is so valuable and that in the New Living Translation is the word consider. Like we are supposed to consider ourselves dead to sin. In the K King James Version, we hear it called reckon. In another version, it's called count. When you see someone say this, maybe you've been in a conversation and they, they say this, hey, listen, it's not done yet, but consider it done. What is actually are they saying? Like when, when someone comes up to you and say, hey, listen, you can count on it. It doesn't make something true, but what you're asking someone to do is to realize that it will be true or that it is true. To consider something is to actually act and live as if that thing is done. And so what Paul is asking us to do is he's saying this, hey, you have to consider yourself dead to sin forever, even though sin is still at the door, knocking, crouching, barking, and trying to get you to revert back to its old ways. So we have to come to grips with the idea that we actually, when we are in Christ as Christians, we are actually participating in the death and the resurrection. You have been given new life by Christ because of your faith, but you have to consider yourself this. So when someone comes to me and says, hey, listen, I'm struggling with the same thing that I've done over and over again, most of the time, it's a problem up here. We have to start acting and living as free. I'll give this example that I gave to the church. You remember the story in the movie um, Castaway. Tom Hanks spends six, seven years on an island, right? He's finding himself losing all that weight and learning how to fish. He, he's a, a FedEx worker that's stranded on an island after an airplane wreck. When he gets off the island, when he becomes rescued, what happens? We see this scene of him when he's rescued and they throw this gigantic party for him. And they, you know, they've got the crab legs that he's looking at and, he, and they're all trying to celebrate with all what they think he would like. 
And then at nighttime, he's got this beautiful king bed. But what is he doing? He's looking at the picture of his girlfriend laying on the ground. Why? He was set free from the island, but yet mentally, he didn't consider himself free. So as you go into this weekend, I will tell you, I believe that the old dog will constantly bark. I know that the enemy will remind you of your past. But the question is, is will you do what Paul said? Will you consider yourself free? I hope this made sense to you today. Listen, if you'd like to share this with somebody, it will encourage them in their walk and in their freedom with Christ. You have been set free to live a new life and a life abundant. Amen.